Way back in Season 2, when we first saw King Andreas talking to his hive mind, he mentions a prophecy, or more specifically, mentions that he is having the girls undo a prophecy. Finally, after last week's episode, Mother of Ulms, we now know what that prophecy is, so we're going to break it all down and talk about what it means as we race towards not just the season finale, but the series finale. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss how we cover it, as well as our interview with the cast of Amphibia that we'll be having at the end of the season, with Matt Braley planning to join us so we can ask him all the questions we still have after the series finale airs. We had previously met two Ulms conjoined at the tail in Quarrelers Pass when Sprig and Polly went there back in Season 2. They live in the caves there, eating passerbys, and seem to delight in eating frogs and bringing them fear. Back in the human world, Anne found some amphibian writing that directed her to find the Mother of Ulms, so Anne and the gang set out to Quarrelers Pass with the hopes of these frog-eating Ulms taking them to their mother. When they get there, they learn the Ulms were actually banished from their subterranean town, but with Anne coming in and warning about Andreas's army, they have a shot of getting back in town if they bring Anne there. The Ulms seem to hate the affairs of other sentient species and seem to live for thousands of years, meaning they are at least the same age and perhaps even as old as Andreas is, and have lived to see the highly advanced time 1,000 years ago before the music box was lost. Despite how long they live and how much they could have seen, they are blind and live underground and seem to hate the affairs of other sentient creatures, as I said. Despite this, the Mother of Olms in particular seems to be very friendly and happy to tell them about the prophecy if she could remember it. After the misadventures of the episode, she remembers she wrote it on the roof and jogs her memory about all the details after she reads it out loud. The prophecy itself talks about three stars burning bright from a place far away, clearly referring to Anne, Sasha, and Marcy, glowing with the powers of the stones and coming from another world. This is a confirmation that, yes, the other girls will get crazy anime powers, as Sasha so bluntly puts it in the episode. And while it seems like the obvious choice for the finale, it feels comforting to know not just that this is going to happen, but that they probably have even more twists and turns in that final episode that will make us feel surprised if they're willing to confirm for us weeks in advance that we're going to get this fight. Andreas talks before about undoing the prophecy, as I said, and of course that is what his plan has been with Marcy and the girls since the beginning. Recharging the stones to get home was something they probably never even had to do, and if they had not recharged the stones, they likely would have just been able to power the music box with their own anime energy waves. The temples drain the power from the girls, as we have seen, returning them to the stone, but with Anne never completing the recharge, she is able to maintain just a sliver of the power from the music box, which according to the Mother of Ulms will allow her to restore that power to Sasha and Marcy for their supersonic mode as well. The prophecy, however, does not insist that there is one particular ending set in stone. While it prophesizes that the girls will come, and Andreas says that the girls are undoing the prophecy, it ends by saying that the girls can either fight or embrace the fall, and that their choice will determine the fate of all. As of now, we don't really know what it means to fight or embrace the fall. It could refer to the big battle that we know is coming, but it could also refer to something new, perhaps a return to the girls fighting amongst themselves, or even Anne and Sasha having to fight Marcy despite them thinking it may end up killing her. Ultimately, they'll have to address their issues with what Marcy did to them there as well, and give her the second chance that they've all been talking about in the show. But if they don't fight and thus don't make up, perhaps they will fall, and all of Amphibia will fall with them. For those who may doubt this prophecy, the Mother of Ulms glows when she reads it, and everything around her is affected by it. Rocks begin to glow, and plants begin to grow and such. There is clearly power in her words. Despite how much the Ulms hate to get mixed in the affairs of other beings, the Mother of Ulms speaks very seriously about the prophecy and the fate of the multiverse that rests on it. She talks about how the hive mind created by Andreas and connected to Marcy is an unnatural thing that cannot sleep and will not die. While Andreas sees himself as a brutal conqueror and has proven he's not afraid to make his enemies suffer, even he might shudder at what this great evil, this mix of great conquerors that came before him, is really after. By combining their essences, they may have become something that could never settle for simply conquering all the worlds, but eventually destroying them, with nothing ever being enough, and the hive mind only becoming more and more evil and insatiable with every King Andreas that dies and ends up joining it. 
The stones were known to be extremely powerful, and the Alms thought they were so powerful that they shouldn't ever be used, but the Conquerors and the Hive Mind have seemingly always wanted them, or wanted to do something with them. It would seem to me that each of the Conquerors were somewhat ruthless, but not as ruthless as they are when all combined in the Hive Mind. Andreas, and perhaps even those who came before him, may have set up an empire that was somewhat peaceful, but once Andreas activated the hive mine and his allies who assisted him found out about it, one of them probably realized that nothing good was going to come of this and ended up taking the music box with her, ending an era of legitimate technological advancement and peace, and casting them into the age that we now know when Anne makes it there 1,000 years later. At the beginning of this episode, the Mother of Alms was just as interested in seeing frogs as she was in the humans. While she did find the humans as being exotic and from another dimension, she notes that she hasn't seen a frog in about 1,000 years. This is an obvious indication to me that when Andreas's frog friend fled, it was probably because the Mother of Alms prophecy. After seeing the hive mind, she may recognize that it is evil, but not know what to do about it. Whether she went to the Mother of Alms before or after stealing the music box, it was probably the Mother of Alms prophecy that convinced her to take the music box to the human realm. Knowing that another species from another dimension would have to take the music box back to Amphibia to access its powers and to fulfill the prophecy. This was 1,000 years ago, long before Los Angeles was there, so the little red frog would have left some clues behind on ancient artifacts to guide the humans who would eventually get its powers, directing them to go to the Mother of Olms just as she had. While this hive mind is a great evil, paintings on the wall depict the three girls entering their super mode and using their weapons to fight some sort of giant frog or toad monster, but not a being that resembles Andreas or the newts in any way. This doesn't seem to be anything that Andreas has plans for in his own painted murals, but the frog looks almost robotic, so I wouldn't be surprised if the show continued to take some inspiration from Sonic and have the girls use their super forms to fight a giant robot frog built by King Andreas, which would explain the details like its eye being so weirdly shaped. Anne is able to use her super form to destroy the little frog bots with great ease, and she was even able to show King Andreas who was boss until her powers ran out. So with all three of the girls having their powers together, it would be too overkill for them to simply fight an army of frog bots or King Andreas again. So I imagine King Andreas is already hard at work on a giant frog robot that the girls will get to fight in spectacular fashion in that final episode. But so far, these are just some theories, and it won't be long now until the series is over, and all we have are the answers they give us. But for those of you who expect to have some questions even after the show ends, I mentioned earlier that we will be doing a livestream interview with the cast of the show about a week after the finale, with Matt Braley joining as well, where I'm sure he'll be able to answer any questions you might still have about the show that we've all come to love so much. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the interview or any other Amphibia break down videos we make along the way. See you guys next time.